Finding good quality medieval reenactment equipment can be really hard these days. There aren't a whole lot of shops in Australia and buying online can be so hit and miss. I know from personal experience how tempting it can be to go for cheaper stuff and sometimes you get very disappointed with the product. G'day guys, my name is Ben from Medieval Mayhem. On this channel we do lots of reviews into equipment, we do lots of DIY videos into costuming and furniture and equipment. We also look at the religion and the politics and the battles of the time. So if you're new here, you might like to consider subscribing. Alrighty guys, today we're going to do a review of the medieval shop Haskal's Axe. That's this one right here. I really like this axe. This is a, a really nice piece. I've, I've, um, I've used this in reenactment a couple of times. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, I, there's a few things that I would like to see changed about it, but the weight of it and the way it handles is really good. Um, and I, I feel this is a, a really good example of a modern reproduction of a, uh, a good historical weapon. Let's take a really good in-depth look at this. Overall, it weighs 1.3 kilos, which is not that much, and it's not too unwieldy. It's a total length of 87 centimeters. Personally, I feel it's a little bit short, and I think the handle, I think the handle could be more oval shaped as opposed to something which is quite rectangular. Um, I do like the, the flat edges because it gives you feedback into how you're holding the ax uh, and where your hands are in relation to the blade. So uh, more of a teardrop shape or a, or a um, uh, slightly oval shape I think could be more realistic and also probably uh, a bit better um, personally from a reenactor's point of view. Uh, the total price was $84. I personally found that um, pretty good really. Uh, certainly when you compare it to many of the overseas models because you're then paying $30, $40, $50 sometimes for postage from overseas and uh, that's really wasted. That's dead money plus the taxes and stuff that come with it. Um, I, I I am a big I'm a big supporter of Australian companies and where Australian companies can come out with a good product I'm definitely going to uh, rate that and promote that. The axe head itself is 18 by 20 centimeters. I, I find that possibly the influence of you know Hollywood and big screen small screen stuff popularized fiction um, this axe head seems a bit small to me. Um, and certainly when you look at some of the Osprey books and some of the other examples out there, there are definitely bigger axe heads. Um, that said, it's, it, it's, um, it's quite functional and I, I, I think it certainly does the job of um, a Huskarls axe. So the Huskarls, the Huskarls were professional warriors. Uh, typically in the Anglo-Saxon armies who then fought the Danes and Norwegian Vikings as well as the, uh, the Normans during the conquest. An axe like this uh, is, is not just a, a weapon to use um, in terms of you know, in a single-handed fashion, um, which you can use this in a shield wall kind of environment, but far from being a two-handed weapon, this axe is actually suitable to be used in a one-handed fashion in a shield wall. What I could do with this axe, and this is definitely proven tactics, is to be able to hook it, hook someone else's shield, and pull that forward. Another idea that's definitely proven, and is arguably the reason we actually have the kite shield, so that being developed in Western Europe, as opposed to many other countries who maintain their round shields, what this type of axe, and obviously uh, you see the Dane axes, which I would argue were bigger again, but we'll be doing some uh, a look at some of the Dane axes which are on the market in future videos. But one thing you can do with a long axe like this is use that to grab at someone's ankles and drag them forward. If I've dragged an opponent forward in a shield wall type environment and my colleagues can push the shield wall forwards, I then have the opportunity to butcher my opponent in front of his colleagues and his friends. And that, I think, 
is one of the big differences that we saw, the big evolutions in military sort of history that um, Western Europe saw, which wasn't seen in uh, places like India and more so the Middle East and so on. More warfare was very, very different. And consequently, this is why the, um, the kite shield started to develop around about the 10th century, which was the height of the so-called, you know, Viking era. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe and share, and I'll catch you in my next video. Righty guys, the um, medieval shop Huskarl's Axe, I'm going to give this 7 out of 10. A couple of areas I do think they could improve on, but basically this is a really good piece of kit. I do recommend it for those of you who are getting into reenactment. Um, this is a nice piece of kit. So. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.